Okay, so we're going to start our uh, Bridget Riley project. Um, we're going to do Bridget Riley and not Victor Vasali, in particular because Bridget Riley liked to use a lot of lines. So we're, we're focusing more on straight and curved lines in this project. Victor Vasali uh, tended to use more squares in, in his optical images. So we're going to call this Draw Like Bridget Riley. So we're going to start off by, well, you're going to start off by placing your hand and your arm on your piece of paper. If you're using a, an A4 piece of paper, you're probably only going to fit perhaps just part of your wrist and your hand on. Um, but if you've got a, an, an A3 piece of paper like mine, I'm going to get my arm in most of that like that. And basically all you're going to do is just trace around your arm and your hand being really careful not to move your hand. Splay your fingers out so you can get round all your fingers. Just be really careful. When you're doing that, just be really careful not to move your hand or your arm. Okay, so that's my arm and my hand. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to create an optical illusion to make it look like the hand is kind of coming out of the paper. So we're trying to make the optical illusion to make it look like the hand and the arm is 3D. Now, how we're going to do this is we're going to do it with a combination of line and colour. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by right at the bottom of the paper we're going to do some lines now we're not going to not going to measure we're just going to do it because that will take ages so we're just going to do it probably just over just over about half a centre not quite a centimetre just over half a centimetre, I think. And I'm going to draw some straight lines using my ruler. And I'm going to if I take that off, you can see what I've done. Can you see what I've done? So I've drawn a straight line there, and I've missed out the arm, and then I've carried on with the straight line. And I'm going to do that I'm going to put my ruler on and just look at it. Just look at that with your eyes and just try and measure it with your eyes so it's the same distance. doesn't matter if it's not exactly the same distance, just roughly the same distance as the first one. I'm going to do another space, another, like that. Can you see? So now I've done two. So I'm going to do my third one. And I'm going to carry on with that now up until I get to about just below the thumb there. So I'm going to just carry on doing my lines and I'm going to stop about there. Okay? Okay, so I brought the camera a bit closer so you can see. 
So I've done the lines up to up to there. So what we're going to do now is we're not going to do straight lines, we're going to do curved lines. So we're going to make it look like the curve over your arm like that. And for us to do that, we just need to make and just do it quite lightly at first just so you can get it right so a slightly curved line so the curved line is going up and over can you see so if I just go over that a bit so we've got a curved line and they're going to meet which meets that straight line at each end so let me do another one I'm going to do a curved line now each time the curved line doesn't it kind of comes just slightly below where the next two line is so if I put my ruler across the one above it so you know that your curved line is not really supposed to go above the line that's above the one that you're doing at the minute so if I got I've got to kind of fit a curved line within that it might come it might come yeah it might come slightly above the next line and then it goes back down onto the line that you started from so if I look at that yeah it goes slightly above it only very slightly though so I'm going to go over that I'm only pressing on really hard so you can see I'm going to move the paper actually to the side because I'm finding that a bit tricky to do it like that I think it'd be easier for me if, if I draw a curved line like that if I do it at the side yeah that's much easier it's much more comfortable it's really important to get into a position when you're drawing that's comfortable for you what's comfortable for me might not be comfortable for you so if I put my ruler slightly above the next line so I'm working on this line you put your ruler slightly above the line above it you know your, your next line hasn't got to go much further and then come back round. Can you see? Oops. Keep, keep that, that line curved. And then I could do my next one. You can sort of measure it with your eyes so you can see the width should be more or less the same each time so you, so you don't have lots of fat ones and then lots of thin ones so it, because it is because it is creating an optical illusion I think it helps if you if you section it off with your ruler so you're not looking at the whole thing because it can send your eyes a bit funny so if you kind of just look at the section that you're doing. And then always come back down to meet that line. So that meeting at the, the line that goes all the way across. So you go so you're not going from this line and then ending at this line. So that's when things start to go horribly wrong. So again, I'm just going to sit and do that now and go all the way up, up to about here with those curved lines.
So you can see I've gone all the way up and obviously the, the curve line gets bigger as you go across the hand. But now I've got to this line. If I start doing a curved line, it goes across the thumb. And now I've got to jump, literally jump from where the thumb ends over the gap and I've, then I've got to carry on that line. So I jump across, so I've kind of got to do like an imaginary line or you could just do a really light line actually and then rub it out later, that might be easier and then carry on that curved line and always making sure it comes down to meet the straight line there. So I'm going to do another line there now I'm going to do a straight line I'm going to do another couple of straight lines actually and make them the same oops So this is where it could start to get confusing. So this line has to meet up with this line here. And then it has, again, use your ruler so you can't see the lines above it. So this line has to come across and meet up with this line. And then this line here, you see? So it goes, so it jumps. So we can't so we can't see this line. So you've got you've got to imagine there's a line going through the hand and maybe it's an invisible line running through the hand. So that invisible line running through the hand has to come up here. and then back down here, like that, okay? So now, this one, this one has to come up, has to come back down to meet this straight line here. it goes up, it comes back down to meet the straight line behind the finger. And then comes back up again to meet this straight line there. So same with this one, it goes up comes back down to meet the line behind it, like that. So it's coming back down to meet that straight line. Wherever you can see the straight line, it comes back down to meet it, and then goes up again. And then comes back down to meet that straight line. Okay. So your lines actually come closer together near the near the thumb for that to work. That's probably the trickiest part of the whole thing is around the thumb because it kind of dips down. But if you think you've got to keep on the same line all the time, you're not jumping lines. So this one. So. So I've missed that one out, haven't I? Because it's the shape of the thumb, sort of on an angle there.
Okay, kabong. So, okay. And then, it gets a bit simpler there. That's probably the trickiest bit of the whole lot, really. And then we've got another one. Draw another line across. Again, it should go round the thumb. So that one has to go up, down. It has to meet that straight line. So that one's going across there. And then this one goes up and back up over the hand. Now it will probably, you can't really see the line, so it kind of just curve around, wouldn't it? And then come back over the finger to meet that line there. Like that. if it's going round the back of the fingers and then go up again up again make it make make it come down to meet that line come up again and meet that line so that's the line that's going up around each finger back up imagine it going back down imagine it going back down to touch that line it's hidden behind it isn't it yeah. imagine it going up and down and then coming up and down, up and down, straight line, up and round. And this, can you see how I'm, because this is a tricky bit, I'm doing one line at a time so I don't get confused. I think if you draw all the lines in at the side when you're doing the fingers, it gets too confusing. So I'm going up and back down to touch that line because you can see it now. Up, back down, up, back down to see that line, up and back down to touch that line again. When I get to the fingers, it becomes a little bit more easier to see what you're doing. I think that's the trickiest part around the thumb because of the angle of the thumb. So again, so the line comes up, back down to meet, so it goes across, up, back down to meet, goes across, up, back down. Up, back down. You see how it's kind of jumping over the fingers, straight, over, straight, over, straight, over. So I'm just going to carry on with that now until I get to.
so you can see I've done the lines, the straight lines, all the way up the page and each straight line meets a curved line in the middle. As I said before, this is the trickiest part here. So you've really got to kind of try and make sense of it. So when the lines come across, they move up over the thumb. And then you've kind of got to imagine imaginary, an imaginary line going back through the hand like that. So you've got to make sure that that line goes up, over, and then meets that line again. So you've got another. So these lines here in the corner are quite close together. Otherwise, it won't work. So it's just important you get that bit right. That bit is tricky. So I'm going to give you, it's quite a lot of work there. There's quite a lot to do there. So I'm going to give you two lessons to do that, okay? So next time, in the next video, uh, we'll talk about colour because colour is also really important when you're, um, when you're making an optical uh, illusion. Okay, um, so I will see you next time.